Hello everyone and uh, welcome to video 4 in the anatomy and physiology section of the OCR AWPE specification. Today we are going to be looking at the cardiovascular system at rest. So by the end of today's video you should be able to do three things. Firstly, identify the structure, uh, structures of the heart. Secondly, define resting cardiac values. And thirdly, explain the process of the conduction system during a heartbeat. So moving in, here is a picture I found online of the heart anatomy. There was only one thing that they missed on this diagram that you need to know about, and that was the aortic semilunar valve. And I have drawn it with a big black arrow to there, and that is, yeah, that is the location. So everything should be the same as GCCPE. PE. So you should understand where everything is. If not, you know, f pause the video, make a quick note of everything. But just to clear something up before I start, the white arrows, that's the direction of blood flow in the heart. So don't get confused. They're not labels. They're just showing you the direction of blood flow. So pause the video, make notes of that if you need to. So after you've done that, let's just look at a few key um, definitions that we need to know before moving forward. Firstly is the cardiac cycle. Now what this is, is this is all the events associated with the flow of blood through each through the heart during one complete heartbeat. So both diastole and systole. So you have like atrial diastole, atrial systole, ventral diastole and ventral systole. Moving on, systole. What it, systole is, is the contraction phase of the heart chamber when it's pumping blood out. Diastole, the relaxation phase of a chamber when it is receiving blood. And the conduction system. This is a group of specialised fibres sending electrical impulses around the heart causing coordinated contractions. Make a note of these, learn them, use Brainscape. Remember, Brainscape is the best. But before moving forward, what I would like to say is notice the right side, well, the left side, sorry. Easy mistake, don't, don't do that. Left side of the heart. It's thicker. It's got a thicker muscular wall. Why is that? Think about it. It's because it has to pump blood around the whole body, whereas the right side only has to pump it up to the lungs. Okay? So, moving forth, we are going to talk about the conduction system linked to a cardiac cycle. So, basically, this is the bread and butter of what you need to know. So, it's kind of a, a tedious process learning this. I'm going to run through it with you. But, you know, you're not going to learn by me just telling you what happens. You need to be active with these videos. You need to be making notes and you need to be learning these notes. And then you need to be applying them by doing questions from past papers. So, basically, the first step of this is atrial diastole. Now, what this entails is the atria filled with blood from the vena cava or the pulmonary vein, depending on which side of the heart it is. The atrioventricular valves close, which are the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve. So... The atrial pressure then rises above that of the ventricular pressure, so then blood starts to passively move into the ventricles through those valves. Next step, atrial systole. So the SA node fires an electrical impulse above the top of both atria, and the atria then contract. The AV valves are then forced open by the massive you know, pressure of blood coming through, and the remaining blood is pumped into the ventricles and the semilunar valves close. So that is the aortic semilunar valve and the pulmonary se semilunar valve. Moving forward, the third step is the ventric ventricular diastole. So the impulse is received from the SA node by the AV node. It de then delays it for 0.2 seconds while it waits for atrial systole to finish. And then the anterior ventricular valves close. The AV node then sends the impulse down the bundles of His, which is in the centre of the heart, to the Purkinje fibres at the bottom left and right side of the heart. The final step of a heartbeat is ventricular systole. So the Purkinje fibres penetrate the ventricular walls with the electrical impulse, causing them to contract from the bottom up. The semilunar valves are then forced open, and blood is removed from the heart via the aorta to the rest of the body, and the pulmonary arteries, which go to the lungs. So, moving on, after we've made notes of that last slide, is what some more definitions and some values that you need to know. So the first one is heart rate. This is the number of times the heart beats per minute. So, yeah, it's measured in beats per minute. So this is approximately 70 beats per minute for an untrained athlete at rest and approximately 50 beats per minute for, an untra for a trained athlete at rest. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle per beat. So this is measured in milliliters. So it's approximately 70 milliliters for an untrained athlete at rest and approximately 100 milliliters for a trained athlete at rest. Finally is cardiac output. Now, cardiac output is the volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle per minute, and it is measured in litres per minute. So, basically, this is approximately 5 litres per minute for both trained and untrained athletes. So, let me just point one thing out very quickly. As you see, after each key term, I have put a shorthand. You can write these in the exam, but 
only if you write the full thing out first and then write it in brackets. This is good for when you're short of time in an exam and you're, you know, you need to be hurrying up because you need to answer every question before you run out of time. But remember, a different marker writes different questions. So if you, just because you've defined it in say question three doesn't mean you can then define it in question no write it again in question eight. You have to write the full thing out again and then shorthand it. So there's an exam tip for you guys. So the equation for cardiac output is Q is heart rate stri times stroke volume. So liters per minute equals beats per minute times milliliters. So say your you know your heart rate is fifty beats per minute, you're trained athlete, you know it's about fifty beats per minute, your stroke volume is about hundred milliliters per beat. So you times them together and you get your cardiac output of five liters per minute. Simple stuff. So quick video today guys, about six minutes long, I reckon. 5.55 so far, wow, I am a genius. So, basically, what we have learned in today's video is the heart and conduction system anatomy, the physiology of a heartbeat, the resting values of cardiac systems during rest, and some key definitions. Moving forward into the next video, we are going to look at the cardiovascular system during exercise. And this is going to be a big video. I may split it into two videos, because there's a lot to cover and it might get become a very boring video, so we'll see with that. But basically, what we need to know is how we change heart rate, how heart rate, no, we need to look at heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output graphs. And finally, we need to understand the vascular shunt mechanism. So that is what we will be moving on to next. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.